notices Kamwa. Ooh, ooh, what's this? Hello, loyal subscribers, it's Gabe. We're gonna give you some actual content now. So we're gonna bring you a tier list for the post-destructive roar format because I've been seeing a bit of tier lists and I've kind of thought that they were badly executed. So I'm gonna try to help set a record straight. So before I go into this, I'm going to just break down a couple things. It's basically about how we're going to be defining tier lists from this point on. We're probably going to do more tier lists happening after future sets. And I don't want to have to explain how we're going to do this every single video. So just to save time, I'm going to do all of that right now. How we're going to go about it is a tier zero format is going to be defined when one deck is basically the entire format. The general agreed upon definition, at least in Yu-Gi-Oh standards, is when tournament results are posted, they like show the top 32. And the tier zero is when 29 of those 32 slots are taken by a single deck or its variants. A tier zero will be like 90% of all decks belong tops belonging to one deck. And a 0.5 format will be when it's two decks doing that. So if you're bad at math, that's 45% give or take for the two decks that are topping, which is like Buddy Fight with Thunder Empire and the Chaos. So after that, it gets kind of hazy how people do it because sometimes decks have like similar topping percentages, but some still edge them out. So how we're going to do it is a tier one deck will be, it'll be one of the top, it'll have one of the three most tops of the format. So percentage notwithstanding if only two or less decks top more than it it'll still be considered tier one tier two will be like the mid three to five tier three will be everything below that because anything below tier three is just gutter trash and that doesn't need to be talked about real quick another thing i forgot to mention is there are like when it comes to topping percentages there's a couple of like non-arguments i hear when it says oh this deck isn't copying for a reason like, some people say that, oh, this deck is too complicated, so nobody wants to use it, and that's why it's not topping. But at the same time, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you have decks that have, like, 8-minute combos with 50 steps, and people still take the time to learn each and every one of those steps so they can still top because that's how good it is. So, the competitive scene will play a deck, no matter how complicated it is, they'll learn it if it gives them an increased chance of winning. There was the, like, the post BT GBT-13 format when it was, like, Overlord and Chaos, which, like, they're not super, super complicated decks, but they were top tier, and that's where they were topping more. But, like, a while before that, when it was, like, Gear Chronicle and Night Rose, those were far more complicated decks than Chaos and Overlord, but they had, because they had so many more steps to them. Like, if you saw my video playing Night Rose, I fucking sucked with it because I didn't know how to pick it up and just play it. But just because I didn't know how to use it does, didn't mean other people didn't. That's why other people did, and that's why they talk. Just because a deck is complicated doesn't mean it's good. It can be complicated and bad, and it can be simple and good, and it can be any variation of the two. Another one I hear is primarily for like Spike Brothers players, is that spikes would top more if people like the aesthetic. And that's also a non-argument because you're forgetting that we're playing with colorful cardboard. If people want to win, they're going to play what gives them the best chances of winning regardless of what it looks like. Like a lot of the people play probably don't care about looking at big anime titties, but we still have all of the Bermuda Triangle tops because it's good art notwithstanding. Recap. Tier 0, 1 deck, tier 1.0.5, 2 decks, everything else is like 3 or so decks depending on percentages. Aesthetic isn't a reason why a deck doesn't top, and complicatedness isn't a reason why a deck doesn't top. Never gonna have to hear this again in any other tier list videos, so we're gonna get started. So because Destructive War came out two weeks ago, we're gonna put up both of the like weekly percentages that um, are released every week for how often a deck tops at OCG uh, tournaments of varying stages. Some of them are like 8 to 16 people local, some of them are like actual full-size tournaments. So we're going to just assume for the sake of argument it scales fair. So uh, Richard will edit in right over here uh, the two images. This one of June 26th to June, July 5th 
and this one will be July 6th to July 12th. If you've made it this far, can you just drop a hashtag pay Richard more if you appreciate all of Richard's editing that he spends all of his time doing? So God bless you, Richard, you beautiful Brazilian bastard. Back to that, June 29th format. We have in first place denoted by in uh, the brown is Tachikaze, which has 19 or 25% of all tops. Next is Kagero with 17 or 22.36. Next are Mega Colony and OTT tied with 10 apiece. Next are Royals and Spikes tied with nine apiece, finishing up with Novas with two to its name. In the next uh, calendar for the July 6th onward, we have OTT with 23, Tachi with 11, Mega Colony with 10, Spikes with nine, Tachis with five, Novas with four, and Royals with two. Just to get the math out of the way, this is a total of 139 topping slots because it's not, this isn't event wins, it's like top one to four or whatever uh, slots they take. There's 139 slots amongst these. Um, the Jul June 26th week had 75 top, had 75 slots, while the July 6th, which was a little bit shorter, um, had uh, 63 tops in it. So the adjusted percentages for how much a deck topped in the two weeks as opposed to just the one which will be put over here is Tachikaze coming in with 17.27%, Kagura with 10.14, OTT with 23.74, Mega Colony with 14.39, Royals with 7.19, Spikes with 12.95, and Novas with 4.32. From what we said earlier, it's pretty obvious that we're not really in a tier zero format. No deck has had like more than 25% of total tops over the course of these two weeks so we're definitely not in tier 0 or 0 0.5 format from this point on we're going to just be discussing what the tiers are and what makes them the tier so tier one right up here is obviously ott it has 33 out of 139 tops it has the highest percentage it's pretty obvious to anybody that's been paying attention to any competitive scene that ott would be somewhere in tier one because it draws like mad, which is effectively a way of superior calling because you just draw your resources and then you can just play them. You can guard with them. So you can predict triggers, which is pretty good for aggressive or defensive because you can just use Soto Orihime, but make the top card of your deck a trigger after your Vanguard drive checks and guarantee yourself damaging a trigger. You can just sculpt drive checks. You can hit pretty hard also. Like when you ride Imperial Daughter, 15k and a crit, you have um, Victorious Deer, which is 10k and a crit to everything. So it has a very strong aggro game, a very strong defensive game, and it gets an on ride PG. So like, makes sense. Next, in sec which would be second second place, but so obviously tier one would be Kagero coming in with 28 out of 139 slots. This also makes sense because Kagro has decent resource management in the forms of Berserk Dragon and uh, Flame of Hope Ermo. It can retire a lot with um, Berserk Dragon, with Bar, and with Nahalem, and Bar and Nahalem also give themselves power to help give them an additional push to their aggro game. So it can get some resources and take a lot away from your opponent. If you're riding grade 3 first and you're on Overlord and you sack a crit when your opponent's at grade 2, Restanding with a four skip, so a 33k can be really brutal for your opponent, depending. Waterfall is an on ride free retire, so that's also obviously really helpful. And it prevents Sentinels, which is kind of its answer to OTT, because if it didn't have that, then your boss would be Overlord, which just auto loses to on ride PGs. So well, uh, the deck is very consistent and has a very strong power output. It has the 13k base, which is just incredible for it. And yeah, I think it's also pretty obvious to everybody that Kagero is a uh, top tier 1 deck. Next is Tachikaze with 24 out of 139, which is pretty fun because we have one of each gift in the top 3. So Tachi has a solid aggro game. It's Excel. It can hit high numbers on top of just being Excel because you have Death Rex and, Giga and um, Mega Rex, which gain several stages of 5 to 10k. You have Gigarex, which can just gain a whole lot of power, and if your opponent doesn't have a PG, they're screwed. You get solid resource gain with stuff like Blytops, um, and that other grade 1 that can give yourself equip gauges. So it has solid aggro game, and it has solid resource game. So it's a nice, like, it 
it's like a nice balance of the two while still maintaining an aggressive playstyle thanks to the Excel gift. So it's pretty pretty obvious from like these standings that Tachi Kaze is definitely in the tier one, which is good because it hasn't really ever hit that slot. So good on you, Tachi Kaze. Hashtag Scaly Boys. Um, next after Tachi Kaze, this is where we're gonna start getting to tier two territory because like four decks in tier one doesn't really make sense. And Another, like, confusing thing with the tiers is, like, these percentages are kind of close to a lot of them, which means that while there is a pretty clear tier 1, other decks have a pretty solid chance of getting there. So, next is, in tier 2, we have Mega Colony with 20 out of 139 tops. So, Mega Colony is pretty similar to OTT because it gains decent amount of resources. You have all those cards that can search for grade 3s, so you you get your protect gifts like OTT can draw into them. You have uh, Spark Hercules, which gives your opponent a pure, like, gives them a neg five for their turn, while also hitting um, like plus fives to all of your guys. So it's basically like your own version of Soul Saver, but it costs Counter Blast, so it's kind of better than Soul Blast five, especially considering the deck also can counter charge. You have Stag Beetle, which lets you call cards from your soul, and you have um, Antlion for your own version of Deer mixed with like Waterfall. So it has stalled aggro game, good consistency, gets free PGs. So Mega Colony, another one, made it to tier two. Good on you, buddy. Right behind Mega Colony is Spikes with 18 of the top slots. Spikes are very tanky now. Like they don't, they're not so balls to the walls as they were, but like. They, they have a lot of consistency. They go into the soul, really, as opposed to the deck. So, trigger thinning. You can still hit the high numbers that it does. Safe Reed's a solid boss that isn't once per turn. So, it's a very consistent and a very hit-hard heavy deck. I feel like its biggest issue, though, is a lot of the cards do their thing at the beginning of your turn. So, if you're playing against Kagero, they can just retire it so you really can't do anything. And that's what's really... One of the things that's really hindering spikes in the long term. But... Spikes is a very tanky, good deck. It's a, it's a solid tier 2 choice. I know I said tier 2 is going to be a bit more... It's going to be more than tier 1, like have more clans in it. But in this case, I'm going to go to tier 3 because the drop-off in tops from this point on is pretty steep. So from OTT to Tachikaze is 9. But that's... Um, it goes 20, 33 to Kagura's 28 to um, 24. So the mid ground is like five to in like to each of them, so it's pretty balanced in there. And then Mega Colony and Spikes have like have a, an average of nineteen between the two. Next is Royals, which has ten, and Novas, which has six. So the gap between the lowest tier one being Tachi at twenty four and the highest tier two being Megas at twenty is so much wider than the lowest tier two which is um, Spikes at 18 and Royals at 10. So this is where we get to Tier 3 territory. Royals is, um, I would say, Tier 3 because it only has 7.19% of tops. It has 7% of tops in a 7-deck format, which is kind of ass. And depending on like how future support comes, it'll, it will probably get even lower because we'll have more and more decks that'll hurt it and like change the percentages. Royal's big issue is it kind of doesn't really know what it wants to do. Everything counter blasts, everything soul blasts, but there is zero counter charging, like which will hopefully be remedied in the mini booster. There's no counter charging. The only real soul charging is with Pongal and Akane and that one grade two, but like it gets like a really clunky grade two lineup because there's Blaster Blade, there's Akane, there's Jaren. There's that thing that lets you solo charge, so it gets like kind of wonky with the grade 2 space. There's Conjurer of Mithril, so it's kind of asking for a lot of counter blasts for it to do what it does, and it doesn't even do a whole lot. Like Soul Saver is a Soul Blast 5, so you will you will use it twice if you're lucky. That doesn't really ma matter though, because you have de a deck that can get free PGs and sculpt drive checks to increase chances of healing. So like, you can stop the numbers Soul Saber hits really easily. You have Kagura, which retires and uses 
um, anti-sentinel to like fuck over your hand before you can like shit it out for soul saver. Everything has a cost, but nothing really gives resources aside from Pongal. And if you're using a Connie, it takes a counter blast to bring it out anyways. It's consistent, but it doesn't really close out games, and it just costs too much to do a lot of what it does when other decks can do it pretty much cheaper. And then Nova's, which is obviously tier 3, because with 6 out of 139 slots and a total percentage of 4.32 over the course of 2 weeks, it it's in a very, very rough position. Nova's are kind of similar to Royals in that everything costs stuff, like, the fact that Perfect Razor is a Counter Blast 2 when it's only Soul Charge, I mean, only Counter Charge is, like, that one Grade 1 that's a Soul Blast 2, that kind of sucks. The other Counter Charge is, is Perfect Razor's on-hit ability, which, considering it's a 12k, like a 20 if it's boosted because it's an Excel deck, which is very easy to stop from give, getting that um, uh, on-hit Counter Charge, so, like, it, it kind of hurts in the resource game also, but it can't generate resources at all. It has no superior call engine, so if your opponent's able to, like, grind out a game while slowly getting rid of your stuff, you're really not going to be doing anything just because you can't generate resources, and so your opponent can just grind out a slow game until they just go in for the kill with, like, Victorious Deer, Waterfall if they're sure you don't have anything in hand, um, anything else that gets or gives crits. So, it's kind of just... It doesn't get enough resources for it to actually, like, do anything. The fact that you can just deny them Counter Blast that hinders it really, like, adversely affects it. I, it's just kind of in a rough place for the time being. Odds are it'll only get rougher just because we have more clans coming out. That kind of wraps it up. Again, tier list, we got tier 1 going to OTT, Kagro, and Tachi. Tier 2 being Spikes and Mega Colony. Tier 3 being Royals and... Nova Grappler. One final note that I want to say is that this isn't meant to like insult anybody or any clan that they enjoy. This is just meant to show competitive analyses and breakdown. You're allowed to play whatever you want. Like if you enjoy Nova Grappler, by all means, like have fun with it, have fun doing it. But just because you enjoy a deck doesn't mean you have to pretend that it's better than it is. Neo Nectar never topped until like G, and even then it had like what one top in that throughout all of G. Neo Nectar was like it had four tops after we got Blue Asha, and that was basically it. Neo Nectar just topped so little, but I still love the deck and I still enjoy it. So I'm gonna keep playing it because I love it, but I'm not gonna pretend it's better than it is. You can enjoy the deck. But that doesn't mean it's like underrated or people are sleeping on it because it, this is a competitive card game. People are going to try out everything to see what gives them the best chance of winning. So people have tried out a deck and realized it's just not that good no matter how fun it is. So if you enjoy playing a deck and it's meta, there you go. Everything's good. You're good to go. If you enjoy playing a deck and it isn't meta, then... That it is what it is, you don't need to pretend that it's better than it is, but it's just not meta, it has a lower topping percentage. That's it. If you don't care about topping, great, doesn't matter. But on the flip side, just because somebody doesn't play a meta deck, you don't really have the right to be a dick. Like, if you, are, if your ultimate goal is to, like, win a tournament, that's great. That's your prerogative, do what you gotta do. That's all on you. You do you, honey guru. That's also not everybody's thing. Some people just want to play the deck that they have fun with. It's a game. People want to have fun. For some people, having fun means winning. For some people, having fun is just doing, playing the deck that they like. Don't be a dick to somebody who's playing a non-meta deck because they enjoy it. And don't be a dick to somebody who's playing a meta deck because they enjoy winning. Because the ultimate goal is to get enjoyment out of it. And we each get enjoyment out of it in different ways because fun is subjective. Next time we do a tier list, be in like two or so weeks after we get the asia circuit booster and that's we get to see how like that has affected the meta and next time we'll have more boys more of the nexus boys coming out it's just me because i have a camera right now i wanted to do this and the boys aren't here and i just kind of wanted to get this video out there because like tier lists are the most controversial thing in all of the vanguard community and it's honestly hilarious 
So I'm just trying to give like the most objective tier list that I can. This is based solely on percentages and nothing else. Not how much fun you have or anything, it's just the percentages. So this is how we're gonna be doing tier list from then on. Um, again, if you've made it this far, drop a hashtag, Richard deserves to be paid more for his editing. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching our first tier list. If you enjoyed it, please let us know. If you have any like things you want, you recommend us doing for future tier lists, drop that in the comment section. Like, comment, subscribe, find us on Facebook, drop us a PM. And...